In this video, we'll discuss a very interesting type of collection called dictionaries. A dictionary is a collection of key value pairs to represent a set of data. Think of it like your phone directory where you have the names and the phone numbers, where the names are the keys and phone numbers are the values. Each key in a dictionary should be unique and dictionary is unordered, meaning they are not arranged in a specific order. This also means that the elements inside a dictionary do not have an index number. The data type for the key and the value should be set at the time of instantiating the dictionary and they can be of any data type. For example, in the phone numbers and job title dictionaries, you can see both the key and the value are set to string. And for the price list, the key is string and the value is a floating point number. For the country code, the key is an integer while the value is a string. And finally, for the attendance, the key is a string and the value is a boolean. So let's see how to work with dictionaries. We'll create a dictionary to store the price list of some fruits. I'll click create variable and name it as price list. In the variable type, I'll select browse for type and I'll search for dictionary. And under MS Corelib, inside system.collections.generic, you will see dictionary. I'll click on that. And here it will ask you to select the data type for key and value. Since we are going to store the price list of fruits, I'll set the key as string. And for the price, we need to set double. So I'll click browse for types and type double. You can see double under system in MS Corelib. I'll select that, click OK. Next, we will instantiate the dictionary the same way we do for list. So I'll type new space dictionary of string comma double from and I'll add a few fruits and their prices. Now let's print the price for a few fruits. I'll add a right line activity and I'll type price list of orange dot to string. And if I run the process, it printed 2.5. So this is how you access the value of an item in a dictionary. You can't really access it using the index number because as I mentioned earlier, dictionary is an unordered collection and does not have an index number. Now let's use the for each statement and print the price of all the fruits. I'll comment out this right line activity and add a for each activity. I'll say for each item in price list. And for the type argument, we will click browse for types. And if I go to MS Corelib, system.collections.generic, you can see key value pair. As you know, a dictionary is a collection of key value pairs. And since we are iterating through each item in a dictionary, we need to select key value pair and select the data type for the key as string and for the value select system dot double and click OK. I'll then add a right line activity and type the price of item dot key plus is dollar plus item dot value dot to string since the value is in system dot double format. And if I run the process now, here you go. Now let's see how to add a new item into a dictionary. There are different ways you can do it, but I'm going to show you two options. The first one is using the assign activity, which is the simplest option. Let's add strawberry to the price list. So I'll say price list of strawberry within double quotes equals 3.99. It's that simple. You can also change the value of an existing item using the assign activity. So let's change the price of Apple to 2.5 using the assign activity. The second option I would like to show you is using the add to collection activity. Now let's add the price of mango. So in the collection, I'll type price list. In the type argument, I'll select key value pair of string comma double 
because price list is a dictionary which is a collection of key value pairs. In this item field you need to create a new key value pair but it is slightly different from creating a dictionary. I'll type new key value pair of string comma double and here we will not use the from keyword unlike a dictionary or a list. For a dictionary you are creating the collection from a list of key value pairs. Similarly in the case of a list you create it from a list of string or integers or any other data type. But in this case you are actually creating the key value pair itself. So we will not use the from keyword. Instead just type parenthesis and type the key which is mango in double quotes comma the price. Now if I want to remove an item from this dictionary I can use the remove method. So let's remove banana from the price list. I'll add an assign activity and I'll type price list dot remove banana in double quotes. You can see this method returns a boolean which will say if the item is successfully removed or not. So let's create a new variable called item removed and set the variable type as boolean. Now if I run the process. You can see strawberry and mango added to the price list, banana is removed and the price of apple is updated to 2.5. We can also check if an item exists in the dictionary using the contains key method. So let's try that. I'll add an assign activity and let's check if kiwi exists in the price list dictionary. So I'll type price list dot contains key kiwi within double quotes. And you can see this also returns a boolean. So let's create a variable called item exists and change the variable type to boolean. I'll then add a right line activity to print the output of item exists variable. Now if I run the process, you can see it printed true. All right, so now it's time for a small challenge. You need to create an application that will take a list of fruit names as input from the user one by one until the user types done. It should then calculate the total price for all the fruits the user has entered from three different shops as given this table and advise the user where he or she can get the best deal. For example, if the user types apple, orange and grapes, it should say go for Linda's fruit shop. And let's say if the user says banana, grapes and kiwi, then it should suggest John's veggies and fruits. Here is a quick video on how the final output should look like. Alright, so have fun with this and we will review the solution in the next video.